Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. The Halloween event Mischief Night came live yesterday. Let me show you how can you farm this event properly, and by that I mean up to 3 times per hour. Hey everyone, so as you probably know, Mischief Night is a new seasonal event for Halloween and it started yesterday, October 29, it will last one full week until November the 5th. This means that you should probably farm the hell out of this event if there is something you really want from it, like a rare outfit, because we probably won't see it until next year for next Halloween in 2020. But I have some tips to allow you to speed up the process and by that I mean doing this event more than once per hour. As you surely know by now, if you have done the event, it pops up every fixed hour in real time, like 1pm, 2pm, 3pm and so on. But there are some tricks that you should know. For example, if you finish an event really quickly, you can just server jump and your chances to find another event at the very end are quite high. Anyway, if you are not familiar with Mischief Knight, feel free to check my guide with everything you need to know about this event, what you should be doing, and how to increase your event progress as well. Feel free to check it out, the link is up there. Moving forward, let me show you how can you do Mischief Knight several times per hour and get all the real rewards that you want. Let's begin. In order to do this event more than once per hour, you will need some luck and a lot of expertise when you are starting your first event. You should start in a public server, of course, preferably with a lot of people, because you want to go as fast as possible. Now, if you see that your event is going very slowly, maybe it's time to server jump or to just accept that you won't be able to find another public event once you are done, because you were quite slow, let's say. Anyhow, whether you decide to stay or server jump, you must complete your first event and then, well, just do the same. Use a friend to join them for a quick server jump or just go back to the main menu and then join another server. This will normally put you in a different server, at least for me, it always works like a charm. And then, if you are lucky enough, you will find your second event. Normally, it will join at the very end during the very last phase and things take forever to load but don't worry if you can see enemies or if the decorations are not loading it takes a while but the important here is to be there and the awards will be yours once the event finishes if you get a chance participate if not oh well what matters here is to get the final rewards which you will if you are there before the event ends now, with the second event done, it's time to go to your private server. If you have one, you can always use a friend server to do this as well. And if you work quick enough, you will still find the event up to start and complete. I must tell you that it's very difficult to do this solo. It's not impossible. However, I was very close to do it today. I ran out of time, but I reached the very end and I missed it by some seconds. I highly suggest you to do this as a duo or as a team if you have enough friends to do so, because it is quite fun and it can perfectly be your third run. So if you have followed first or you have a friend with a private server, make sure to take advantage of doing it again and farming the event as much as possible. Finishing one event quickly and finding another in public servers is not so difficult. Moving to private worlds, that's another story, especially if you are duoing or soloing the event. It can be challenging, but it's totally not impossible, as I mentioned before. There are some tips and tricks that can make things easier, but overall, you should take different paths than your teammate to make things a little bit more efficient. Don't forget that this should be your third run, therefore you are short in time. You need to be as efficient as possible or you will run out of time and fail the event. We don't want that to happen, therefore you need to split up 
share tasks and make the progress bar go up as fast as possible. The main keyword here should be move, never stop moving. Hit the cars to make them explode, hit the robots to kill them and click on whatever is part of your tasks like a candy ball, a graffiti or even a fork box. Your main goal here is to keep the progress bar moving, therefore you can't really stop. Also, dying is a no-go here. Every time you die is a lot of lost time and time is precious here. It can really make a difference between completing or failing the event. Now, to make sure that you always have something to do, I suggest you to follow the cabin's roads because you will always find new cars to explode, new robots to kill and overall tasks to just do. If you find some time, then go ahead and share the legendary ghouls with your team but if you are very tight just ignore them kill them and move along because there's no time to lose also if you see a dead teammate make sure to pop up a steam pack to revive them i know i know this one is very captain obvious but sometimes it's easy to miss when someone goes down keep an eye in your teammates just in case that happens and you are a little bit distracted Moving on, don't forget that in this phase there is a little bit more to do than just exploding cars and killing robots. You can collect food from candy balls, add graffitis and kick ghouls asses because there's a lot in here. And oh boy, if you don't take care of them, I'm very sure they will take care of you. <laughs> Jokes aside, don't miss the stains in the walls because the graffitis are a great extra to the progress bar. I just like to keep moving forward, it's just my thing and it works so well especially for this event. I'm always looking for the cars in front of me and I just go ham, you know, I kill everything I can and... Don't forget to keep an eye on your HP as well, sometimes I forget about it and I'm like 5 HP. To be honest with you, I was extremely lucky in this run because normally I go down more often when I'm soloing or doing because, you know, Mr. Goodsea shoots at you with this type of HP, you go down immediately. It's just the way it goes. Assault drones can also be dangerous if you don't cripple them in time. Melee attacks from an assault drone is like, bam bam, you're dead. And sentry bots are also strong. Overall, this is a paradise to get killed if you are not careful when you are running a bloodied build especially. I feel like rifle builds work the best here, you know, long distance rifles where you can just stay up there in some roof and shoot everything from afar, but that's not my build so it's a bit difficult for me to do such a thing. I use shotguns, heavy weapons and melee weapons. I feel like shotguns are the best choice for this type of event and it hasn't really disappointed me so far. The enforcer perk is just so strong, I either kill everything or I cripple them and one way or the other it's a great result because it helps me reach my goal and that's all it matters for this event because we want to finish it and complete it, right? Right. So at this point you should be readying yourself for the last battle, which can be quite tough. The legendary sentry bot can easily kill you and he doesn't go down that easily, he's a tough guy. Also assault drones might spawn, normally they do, and if you don't cripple them, I can assure you that they will cripple you. More like obliterate you, but anyway, Mr. Gutsis can be also very dangerous as you can see. And the sentry boss is scary. It's a scary beast. I suggest you to take cover with whatever you can find, just like this car or what's left of it. And I try to cripple it. It seems to kind of work because when I'm shooting at it, it doesn't really shoot at me. So God bless shotguns with enforcer. And that's how I do it my first round. Actually, it was my second, but the first one I wasn't recording. And as you can see, it's not that difficult to do. Soloing is way more challenging. And A, you can literally spend at least half an hour doing mischief nights. Three per hour, no problem, easy peasy. 
Now that you know how to farm this event properly, you might be asking yourself what are the rare outfits that you can get from this Halloween event? There are dozens of rewards that you can get from Mischief Night, but only a few are rare and only a very very few are rare outfits. I'm going to show you the rarest ones. Let's start with the Ranger hat clean and the Ranger outfit. Now, you can get a clean one, which is rare. I couldn't get it yet, but it pretty much looks like this one. It's just this one is a little bit dirty and the colors are not as vivid. It doesn't look as nice, but the model, it's pretty much the same thing. Now, when it comes to the hat, you can get it from the Shallowstone secret vendor, but it's still a rare item. Next, we have a really, really rare outfit, which is the White Spring Jumpsuit. Before, you could only get it from certain events in the Savage Divide. It was like a 1% chance, maybe less than that. And now you can get it very easily with this event. So make sure to do it and farm it well. You can also get the Fireman Helmet and the Fireman Uniform, which is a new entry from Mischief Knight and it looks really really nice now the hat is one of the rarest hats in game i'm not sure how you can get it but it was in game already about the outfit not so much the one that exists in game is different so this is a unique one and i think the only way to get it is through mischief night right now one of the rarest drops is the pirate costume in the pirate hat which look exactly like this and I must admit that it has a cool and badass look to it. I'm not so sure about the mug in the waist, but otherwise, it's a really good costume. And the hat, it already exists. It's the revolutionary one. It looks the same. But A, it is a pirate hat. Another weird drop is the Jack O'Lantern suit and the short suit. They look basically the same except one has pants and the other has shorts. I got the suit one, it looks pretty decent, it's very elegant. I don't personally like orange, but this one is pretty okay and it's a very unique one. So I will be wearing it in the future for sure. What about the plans? Are there any unique rare plans that you can get from Mischief Knight? Yes, you can. But most of them will be regular ones, even some that you can buy from White Spring vendors, which I have all already. Basically, there are 10 different Jack O' Lantern figures for your camp. You can make them from real pumpkins. One of them, the happy one, is to claim for free in the Atomic Shop right now. And the others you can get from Mischief Night, the plans at least. And as you can see, they all look different. Some of them are cooler than others. But overall, they are pretty much what you can find in the pumpkin house. Even the rack plans, there are four different ones and they are very similar to the not say the same as in the pumpkin house. Some of them are full of pumpkins, some of them are kind of empty. There is even an empty one. I'm not sure what's the purpose of that, I guess. So you can decorate with your pumpkins, like create a customized rack, which is fun to have that option in game. But other than that, that's pretty much what is rare and exclusive from the mischief event in terms of plants. There is one more item though that is about 10% chance to drop. It's called the Reaper Vault Boy. It looks like this. It's quite badass. But I'm not a big fan of these paper figures, so for me it's nothing special, but it does look very nice. <laughs> Alright, that's everything I have for you guys today. I hope you learn how to farm Mischief Knight a little bit more efficiently. And what items are you looking for to get? I'm still farming them. I don't have all the rare plans and outfits. For example, the part one, I borrowed it just for the video. It's not mine. So I still have a little bit to go, but we are definitely getting there. So what's your favorite item right now? And how do you like Mischief Knight? Do let me know in the comment section below. I also hope this video will help you farm and reach your goals. If you are new around and you enjoyed what you saw, then don't forget to click in the subscribe button below. 
to support this kind of content and to help me grow as well. I have a Patreon page for anyone who would like to support me even further. The link is down below as usual. One more note, my Halloween event is still going until November the 3rd, so feel free to join my Discord, all the details are there. And all you have to do is basically submit one screenshot, your best screenshot for Halloween, and hope for the best. The prizes are quite nice, I must say so myself. That's going to be everything. Thank you guys for watching until this point. I will see you very, very soon in the next video. Until then, take care. Adios. Bye bye.